So this question is a simplify question. We know that because the question is short, simplify questions are usually between one and three lines long, and because the question provides an equation. All simplify questions will have either an equation and or expression. So when I see that, that combination, short question plus equation or expression, I take the equation or expression, so in this case, the equation, and I simplify it. So to simplify this, I am going to square both sides of the equation. In doing so, my square root and power of 2 goes away. I'm left with x minus a equals uh, x minus 4 times x minus 4. x minus 4 times x minus 4 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. The question tells me that a is equal to 2. I should have thought of that earlier, but I can just throw it in right now. So since a is 2, this is going to say x minus 2 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. I can then combine <clears throat> like terms by subtracting x from both sides of the equation and adding 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm left with just 0 here on the left-hand side, and I have x squared minus 9x plus 18 here on the right-hand side. Now to factor this trinomial, I'm going to set up a product of my binomials, and I factor this by just throwing an x here and here, and then I ask what are the two numbers that multiply to equal positive 18 but add up to negative 9? Those numbers are negative 3 and negative 6, which tells me then that x minus 3 can equal 0, right? I just set each individual binomial equal to 0 separately. So x minus 3 can equal 0, in which case I get x equals 3. But then also x minus 6 can equal 0, in which case I get x equals 6. So that would seem to tell us that the answer must be choice A, where we have 3 and 6. But what I've learned on this test is that you always want to double check, especially when you have a radical, just to make sure that these numbers that you get as solutions actually do work in the original question. So if I plug this back into the original equation, I'd get, well, I'd get, first of all, if I plug the 3 in, I'd have 3 minus, again, a is 2, so 3 minus 2 is equal to 3 minus 4, and that tells me that the square root of 1 is equal to negative 1. And here's we, here is something very tricky about this test. So on this test, whenever the square root is already provided for you, meaning that you are not adding the square root in as part of your process of simplification, but instead the square root is already written down for you, already a part of the question, we do not consider the negative answer of the square root, right? So usually we see, hey, the square root of positive 1 is equal to plus or minus 1. What I'm telling you, I don't know why, but on this test, if the square root is already provided, then the negative 1 is not a part of your answer, and therefore this does not actually work, and therefore x cannot equal 3. When we try 6, we do the exact same thing. The square root of 6 minus 2 is equal to 6 minus 4. The square root of 6 minus 2 is the square root of 4. Again, is equal to 6 minus 4, which is 2. And like I said before, if the square root is already listed there and you are not yourself adding it in in order to simplify, then we just look at the positive uh, outcome, so the square root of 4 is equal to 2, and 2 does equal 2. So x equaling 6 is a good answer, but x equaling 3 is not a good answer, and therefore the only answer to this question is choice D.